I did this research together with my uh, former fellow, um, Michael Stoiber, who is now at the University of Edinburgh, and one of my uh, uh, master students, Lars Klein. Um, so what we want to do is to bring the next generation of C++ to, um, to GPUs, and when I started my, my PhD at, at Münster, I looked at some code that is actually doing uh, this dot product um, computation. It wasn't the, the standard template library back then, but uh, we had the same problem like you, say, you see here. Um, what we do is we have a transform and a, a accumulate function, and if you know the STL algorithms, you would say, oh no, why you do it this way? It, it gives awful performance because you do a lot of unnecessary things, just use inner product. And back then, it wasn't um, our target to implement very specific um, algorithms, so we try to bring up something more advanced than just push out as a lot of functions like we have in the STL. So, for example, when you have two developers and they work on different uh, files in your, in your application, they might bring up some functions where they use transform and accumulate, and when you add this layer of abstraction to your program, it looks very nice, it looks very uh, small and clean, and you get really bad performance, like this transform and accumulate here, while the inner product um, maybe needs one, one third of the time. So for this talk, I, I just think about what, what can the optimizer do for us in this special case, and I found the patch that didn't make it in the upstream, it's a loop fusion pass, and I um, patched it up for LLVM 5.0, and well, I get the performance that I was uh, targeting for. So that's fine for, for sequential programs, and loop fusion is out there somewhere, it just has to be included into LLVM, maybe by someone else, I don't know. But when we go to GPUs, we have the same problem. And this is uh, the same code, it's using Thrust, and they also have uh, the inner product algorithm, of course. But when you split it again in different files and nobody knows each other from the development team, maybe because you're using some, some uh, template library from another university or something like this, you end up with the same problem with the performance. And inner product, just shows the same results as the transform reduce here. And that's, the problem with GPUs is that kernel code, a GPU kernel code, is totally separated from, uh, from each other. Um, two kernels, they didn't see each other, they didn't know each other, and there is a lot of research out there performing kernel fusion and so on, but it needs a lot of infrastructure to bring in another level of optimizer that will fuse your kernels and um, even in, in NVIDIA's compiler there is no such stuff as, as kernel fusion and in LVM also. So, the solution is, as, uh, is provided by uh, the next round of uh, C++ and it's uh, proposed in the in the N4560 um, <laughs> paper from Eric Niebler, and it says, let's bring ranges to the standard library. And ranges is a concept that is very old, it's out there for a long time, but uh, the C++ standard template library is still missing it. And Eric Niebler um, wrote uh, the range for a, a V3 library, that is the prototype implementation for his work, and now you can write your dot product, when you, um, this way, okay, the laser doesn't fit. Um, you zip A and B together into one um, view, how it's called here, and then you uh, perform your transform on the view, and then you push it into accumulate. And when we look at the performance of this code, we achieve the same performance as the inner product um, algorithm in the STL. So, how does it work? Um, 
uh, don't go, uh, want to go into detail about the ranges library, but there is a concept that is called the fuse, and they are lazy evaluated and non-mutating uh, operations on ranges. And the evaluation of the, of the transform and the SIP and also this lambda multiplier up there, it happens in the executing algorithm, and in this case, in the accumulate. So the fusion is now not uh, happened, or doesn't happen in the compiler, it's up in the implementation, and it's guaranteed to be fusion, because a, a view cannot evaluate on its own, it's in the algorithm. So let's bring this to GPU. And um, <laughs> as a PhD student, my time is very limited, so I try to bring a very small solution to this problem, and um, I, we, Michael from, from Edinburgh and I came up with a solution that just says, okay, we need some a way to bring our data to the GPU, so we say GPU copy, and push in our container, and we get a GPU container back, and all the data transfers happened inside this copy, and then we just implemented some new um, um, algorithms for GPUs, where we can push in our ranges from the ranges v3 library. So, and we, want, we didn't want to touch everything in ranges v3 because it's a, a huge template library with a lot of layers of abstractions, so we don't want to touch that anyway. Good, for parallelization of this stuff, we used my uh, research topic, and it's called Programming Accelerators with C++, so, or short packs. And at this point, LLVM kicks in, and what I have implemented in packs is that you just uh, push in your C++ code to the front end, we compile it, we, we generate an AST and lower it to, to IR, and then we stop the compilation, that's where the offline stage ends. We inject this IR into the final executable, link it together with our, our runtime system, and then the online stage starts to work during execution of your program. We look what um, GPUs are available, and then this online compiler generates uh, NVPTX, uh, through PTX through the NVPTX backend, or we transform the LLVM IR to Spear for non-NVIDIA GPUs. And uh, this works very well, and it uh, gives us, during runtime, full control over the kernel's IR, so we can, say, play around with it a little bit. And this brings me to my second topic in this talk, which is multi-stage programming. And this is some stripped version of this reduction algorithm I used uh, in this small dot product, and there is a lot of code. And um, in PEX we do it, we execute kernels the same way then you would do it in CUDA. We have uh, blocks of threads that execute the same stuff, so it's an SPMD model here. And at this point, we wanted to optimize our um, reduction a little bit more, and we use this red function over there that is called stage. And we just drop in a lambda or a, a, another expression that can be evaluated. And what happens here is that our um, runtime system, in this case now, gets two sets of IR. It gets the kernel's IR and this multi-staging IR. And from this multi-staging IR, we can um, JIT compile this um, stage function, I showed the slides before, and can evaluate it prior, prior to the kernel launch. And then we take the results from this evaluation, put it into the IR, and then we call the optimizer again. And we allow, in this way, more aggressive optimizations like this loop unrolling, or like loop unrolling for this special case. So, what is the impact of multi-staging or multi-stage programming? And we see in this slide where one is our un-multi-staged uh, reduction, we get uh, some nice performance increasement up to 35% for the reduction. Um, 
these are two benchmarks. One is uh, just an, um, summing up all elements in a vector, and one is the real dot product. And what we see on the GPU is that some really benefits from multistaging, while the dot not that much uh, benefits from it, only 10%. And this is because the GPU uh, hides um, the benefits from loop unrolling, in this case, uh, through um, the latency hiding on global memory. Okay, but uh, all optimizations come with a price, and in this case, we add some compilation overhead to our kernel call, to our first kernel call. And we compared it to NVIDIA's NVRTC library, which JIT compiles you CUDA code at runtime, and um, we, we just pushed in the values uh, in the string of the CUDA code. And you see, compared to, to some library where you do front-end stuff, you really pay a small price for your performance, while you end up with um, 15 to 20 times the, the um, overhead when you use NVRTC or OpenCL. That's the same thing. So, performance. We did some benchmarking and uh, compared it with some uh, Examples we found in Thrust, to be doing some Monte Carlo, Mandelbrot, and Voronoyo uh, computations here, besides the smaller VL, SXP, SUM, and DOT. And we see we can achieve competitive performance to Thrust, and with our MSP optimization, we can even outperform them. And that was not enough for us. So, um, uh, programming GPUs with PACs was quite easy. So it was, it was some years of uh, work, but uh, it worked. So we want to go back to CPUs and going native. Because we wanted a, a portable programming model just like uh, OpenCL. And CPUs, we programmed before that through the Spear backend, but um, that gives some problems. So we uh, tried to achieve a native backend that uh, uses MCJIT on uh, CPUs, but uh, performance in, in nowadays needs vectorization, and uh, we did some research and found really nice work uh, developed here at, at Saarbrücken by Ralf Kahnberger, um, this whole function vectorizer used over there in the middle of box. So we use this to vectorize the code, we use MCG to compile the code, and we use Intel's TBB to actually run them in parallel. And what we comp just took our GPU optimized code and did uh, rewrote the, the whole stuff in OpenCL for comparison. And we see when we go uh, compare this with Intel's auto vectorization on two Intel Xeon files, we are not that bad in, for this case, even if the, the code is optimized for GPUs. Well, the OpenCL code is also optimized for GPUs, so the, the numbers show that, not entirely. Good, but when we look at AMD, and that's the problem with OpenCL, you never know what OpenCL implementation is available for your, for, your, um, for your code, then you just end up with these uh, numbers where sum and dot outperforms AMD's OpenCL implementation by 126 times. Uh, and that's because we, we have a lot of barriers in this code, and uh, the barriers in open, AMD's OpenCL implementation are very expensive. And another thing is, when you go to um, architectures where no OpenCL implementation is available, you still have a problem, so we rewrote these benchmarks in OpenMP and pushed it into IM, uh, IBM's XL compiler for IBM Power 8, and we see now the dot and sum really suck in performance, but uh, our other benchmarks run quite well. And yeah, five seconds left, that's it. Questions? 